<laughs> so we have uh, Saranya from India. And we have our friend Dan Vlamis. Hi, Dan. I speak to you more than my mom. <laughs> 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 I had, I think, a presentation where you were there yesterday. We have Dee from Nebraska, uh, Wayne from San Luis, Sudhir from India. Thanks for joining late, Sudhir. Okay, I think we have four, five minutes more. So I'm going to eat my chocolate croissant. <laughs> from Iceland, welcome, great country. Paris, hello, thanks for joining. I know um, for some of you it's getting late and it's your Friday evening, so we appreciate you joining us today. And we'll get started here just in a few more moments. Kenya, hello. I see Selim from Turkey. Hi, Selim. Always happy to have people from Turkey. You love Turkey. Fernando from Zapopan. Dan again. <laughs> and I'm going to invite Joey. I think we are just missing Joey, right? Joey, Carrie, and Philippe. Oh, okay. So let's go. One. <laughs> to carry free Philippe. Philippe Lyons, the Lyons on the south. Okay. I Manoche from Toronto, nice to have you. Might be cold in Toronto right now, right? I'm already freezing here in Florida. It's 73 today, so I can't imagine Toronto. <laughs> oh, Ron rushing from uh, Orlando. Uh, hi, Ron. Nice to have you. Ah, Niha from Philadelphia. 40 centimeters of snow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, Ben, you can't complain about 70 Fahrenheit. You just can't. <laughs> well, I have to put a t-shirt on it. <laughs> okay, so I think we are missing Philip. And Carrie still, Ben. And Carrie, okay, let me chase on Slack. Carrie up. Oh, and Amit. <laughs> okay, we still have time, so it's good. And Carrie is here. She's just not a panelist. Oh. She put in the chat. Ah, okay. Ah, sorry, Carrie. Uh, my mistake. Okay, I promote Carrie. So ah, there we good. Go. So maybe it's the same with Philip because I think he was joining the last one this time. Thanks, Alex. Okay. Maybe it's Philip. Let's see. I'm going to invite him again. Hi, Carrie. Philip Lyons. Okay. Philip will join in a few minutes. So we're good. Okay. Very cool background there, Carrie. I like it. <laughs> we need to start getting more available for everyone to pick their favorite team. 
Yeah, I think that's going to be a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> I think the marketing team's working on some stuff. So hopefully they'll send it soon. And I wanted also to say thank you for, uh, for a lot of people from Cognizant to, see, to, to come today. I, I checked the list of who is registering today. And I saw we have a lot of employees from Cognizant. So thank you for joining also. Ah, and I have John from Ireland uh, in the Wicklow. Nice, John. I was bringing my cat to the Wicklow uh, when I was going on vacation uh, from Ireland to France. They have a good uh, cat shelter there uh, where she was spending the vacation. Uh, amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think you are uh, almost ready to start. Um, Alex, maybe we can wait one more minute. I see the list is growing and then you can take it from here. Absolutely. And we did have a question already come through about if this is going to be recorded and it will and it will be posted on the Oracle Analytics YouTube channel. You can, of course, uh, go back and check out uh, previous months Oracle Analytics lives. Um, we also have some nice little demos and other videos that you can check out there as well. Okay, so I think we are all going to put our webcam done and we can start. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining today. Welcome to the January 2022 Oracle Analytics Live. I can't believe it's already 2022. So welcome and happy new year. Um, of course, during the Oracle Analytics Live, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions and get your questions answered. Uh, if you could please submit them in the Q&A button at the bottom, at the end of the presentation, we will be answering those questions live. And please be advised, this is our safe harbor statement. Give you a second to look at that. Moving forward, we have a lot of presenters today from the Oracle Analytics team. We're really excited to have you here today. And let's jump into it. It's gonna be a packed agenda, um, lots of demos. We have sports analytics update, FAW product roadmap update, executive update. And like I mentioned, make sure to stay for the end for the live Q and A session. All right, let's get going. I'm going to pass this over for a product strategy update from Ben. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Ben. I'm Senior Director of Product Strategy for Oracle Analytics. Uh, again, thank you all for joining the Oracle Analytics Live. It's the first one of the year, uh, so we have a lot of demo today. Uh, thank you. I see we have a lot of people from India, from Latin America, from Africa also. I saw Cameroon, I think, where it's really hot. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, we can go to the next slide. And today I wanted to show you what is available in January 2022. So it's our new update of Oracle Analytics Cloud. Um, you probably tested the Redwood design. So it's a brand new design, which is now, I would say, not anymore optional, but mandatory with a January update. Um, you will see this Redwood design is going to evolve during the year and during the next year. So you will see more and more new icon, new color, new color palette, new addition. It's going to be excellent. Um, we have also released a lot of different features, uh, fix some bug. Uh, I just selected seven features. So you can see change setting for multiple columns. It was something a lot of customers ask. It's delivered. Auto insight, uh, I think it's my preferred feature. Philippe is going to demo that today. Um, inner radius uh, of a donut chart, what I call a skinny donut. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture after, it's excellent. Uh, we have more uh, algorithm for machine learning with neural network now. It was also a, a big request from you. And finally, user and role management. If you have audit from KPMG, ENY, any other vendor, uh, and they are asking you to provide a list of all the role and the permissions in Oracle Analytics. Now you can download it on a monthly basis to track the changes. So it's very, very good. And finally, cache the dashboard list. If you are using Classic, uh, you can retrieve the dashboard really, really faster that way. 
uh, we are going to go to the next slide. It's just the last slide that I wanted to show you. Um, now you don't have any more just donut. You have skinny donut or slim donut, you name it. Um, it's really going to make your dashboard looks amazing. And uh, I really want to see more and more of this dashboard. So if you post on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, try to tag Oracle Analytics or me or Alexandria, Matt or Carrie or Jamie or Joey, everybody else. Uh, we are always happy to comment and happy to invite you to the next Oracle Analytics Live to present your data visualization. So again, thank you so much. And now we are going to have an executive update with Joey Fitz, our VP. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. I love uh, seeing the global audience of this community come together. As Ben said, that's the entire point, is to uh, bring us all together and, and, and support each other in, in our analytics efforts. I just wanted to share a couple of, a couple of news bites for you to let you know what's, what's going on in our world that we're particularly excited about. Uh, you may have seen in our Q2 earnings in December, the announcement of Mayo Clinic as a large new customer for us for our Fusion Cloud applications for ERP, HCM, and for supply chain management. Um, there will be news coming up uh, in the coming days, next week, by the end of the month. You'll see um, the role of analytics with this, with this customer as well. Very exciting. Um, and continuing the theme around our industry focus, you may have also seen the announcement that we just made on the next slide with Cerner, the acquisition of Cerner. This is uh, very exciting news, largest acquisition in, in our history and um, continues the momentum with regard to our industry focus. Uh, the continuing theme that you'll see from us in terms of bringing all of the technologies that, that Oracle brings to market to bear uh, to the benefit of, of industry users with context. So um, you'll see this in our industry cloud efforts, and Cerner is certainly a very visible example of that within healthcare, continuing the success we've had in healthcare and giving us uh, a tremendous opportunity uh, globally uh, to continue to serve not only uh, the healthcare industry, but the, the individuals that they serve. So for the betterment of, of all of us as the patients uh, of these healthcare providers for better service and to really modernize their capabilities. So uh, we're really excited about this effort as well. Stay tuned, you're gonna see more and more of this uh, in terms of our industry focus and being able to support the needs of, of uh, our industry customers. And then finally, I also wanted to share uh, new team member who's, who's, who's joined our, our team, uh, James Richardson. Uh, James is an old friend and uh, industry luminary. He, he was with Gartner years back as the uh, lead author for the Gartner Magic Quadrants for Analytics and BI platforms years back, and then went to Click and, and helped to lead their effort in, in, in moving to a leader, focusing primarily on self-service for, for business analysts. Uh, and then went back to, to Gartner, where he's been for the last few years, again, leading the efforts for the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Analytics and BI platforms. And about 15 days ago or so, he joined Oracle. And uh, we're very excited about uh, sharing insights um, and new capabilities that Oracle will bring to bear. Stay tuned for our upcoming Oracle Analytics Summit uh, later this year. We'll keep you posted as that comes together and you'll You'll hear uh, our continuing and evolving vision, a new vision of where we go from here. And James will certainly have a, a great role to play in that. So we're very excited. The momentum continues here uh, with Oracle Analytics and it's, uh, it thank, it's thanks to you. So thank you for being here. Thanks for spending time with us. I'm gonna stop here because you have a lot of great content after me uh, with some wonderful demos and fast moving uh, presentations. So back to you, Ben. Right. We're going to talk about some sports analytics now. Thanks everyone for joining. I'm going to give a quick recap and um, talk about how we're using sports analytics in our product strategy here at Oracle Analytics. So, you know, we, we have this new theme where we're uh, being able to describe all of our products and how they integrate and what kind of use cases and, and problems they're solving. And by doing that with our sports partners, it also couples with the ability to, to tell that in exciting ways where um, you know, we've, we've seen 
Red Bull Racing take the world championship back in 2021 at the end of the year. Um, and our uh, lovely Golden State Warriors, you know, leading the charge as they're winning so many um, games in the NBA. So we're looking forward to, to leveraging this as a great storytelling platform to, to show customers and prospects how we're leveraging our products. Uh, next slide. Okay, so we'll start with about talking about team performance. This category, which my uh, text here isn't showing quite as well, but for Red Bull Racing, you know, the we're going to talk about how they're leveraging simulation for the Seattle Sounders, the uh, game strategy, and for Golden State Warriors, how they're uh, improving their player development and, and uh, player strategy. Next slide. So for Red Bull Racing, as you know, this is an expensive sport. So drivers are unable to drive their cars for practice every day. And so by leveraging the race simulation and using OCI and uh, machine learning, they're able to optimize their race strategy and optimize you know, all of their, the different business components of their, um, their team as well. So that's been an exciting um, road for us to watch them win games and be a part of that journey. We also have some great uh, projects coming up for Red Bull here in 2022. So stay tuned for that as we roll those out. Um, from a game strategy, you guys have probably seen, if not, um, check out the Seattle Sounders um, Data Insights video. You can just Google for it. You know, they're leveraging machine learning to be able to take and uh, look for line breaks. So using machine learning and, and uh, AI vision to look at components distances from each other so they know when there's a good placement um, for different teams to um, get the ball through the opponents and ultimately get it into the, into the net so that they can score. And the uh, de player development, next slide for Golden State Warriors. This is an exciting one as well where uh, the teams are, the coaches and teams are, are using the warrior player dashboard. And, um, you know, they're putting together their game strategy around having a young team, but also having, you know, strong uh, leaders like Stephen Curry and Andrew Wiggins and others um, where they can keep track and make sure that they're putting together their practice schedules and ensuring that they continue to move forward to win another NBA championship. Next slide. Now on the uh, fan engagement side of the house, we've all seen the Premier League where we have match insights being displayed in game on the Premier League sites. So um, excited for that to continue. And um, yeah, good, good stuff for Premier League here on, the, on the, the broadcasting that's going through. We hope we see some more exciting things we can present to you soon on that. Next slide. So, Ultimately, the, the transition as we're creating all of our 2022 projects with some of these sports teams and partners is being able to showcase and show how Oracle technology is powering these teams and leveraging our product uh, use cases to do uh, the work and, and solve the problems that they need, like win championships. And uh, so that's all I have for the sports update. I'll pass it on to the next. Thanks, Carrie. I know that's always some really exciting stuff to see. Oh, did you have one last thing you wanted to touch on here? Oh, sorry. Yes. Let's, uh, just wanted to give a quick shout out. Our developer team's doing a Pi Day event. This is going to be on March 14th. You'll start seeing and being able to register for this mid-April. Uh, it is an online event um, due to our COVID restrictions that we currently have, but it'll have discussions, hands-on labs, and demos. This is really developer focused, but there's going to be some great prizes that get given out, and it's going to be around a broad number of different uh, frameworks and technologies that Oracle has to offer. So if you're needing a sweet rush, go ahead and watch for that. We'll keep you up to date on when that's coming out. But uh, a hint for one of our Oracle Analytics labs, it's going to be a sports lab. So we'd love to have you join and uh, be a part of that. Wonderful. Thanks, Carrie. I'm just gonna to speak to you real quick. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Toothman. I'm part of the product strategy team here. And one of the things we focus on um, is Gartner Peer Insights. It's an anonymous review, 100% anonymous, takes less than five minutes to do. It's for OAC, OAS, 
FAW, OBIE users. Um, again, it's 100% anonymous, but we do track it. And why it's important is because it's helping us to make a better product. You can leave your feedback, let us know what we're doing well and uh, areas for improvement. You can see, like I mentioned, it is anonymous, but I am going in there and uh, tracking the numbers of reviews left. And right now you can see overall, we have a 4.26. So I think we have a poll here, uh, Ben, if you're able to launch that for me. If you'd be willing to leave a review, we'd greatly appreciate it. Again, it's anonymous. It takes only a couple minutes to do. You can use your business email or your LinkedIn account for a speedy, uh, speedy sign-in. Um, and that's just so Gartner can uh, verify that you are a user. Uh, again, it is anonymous. And we'd appreciate your time and your feedback. We'll leave that up for a second here. All right, and while that's up, we can just move on, keep it going here with an FAW roadmap update with Amit Goyle. I'll pass it over. Thank you, Alex. Um, hello, everyone. So in the FAW area, uh, we continue to expand across Fusion modules. You know, ERP analytics is already available, HCM is available, and now um, SCM analytics is also available. The CX analytics is in beta right now, and a launch is likely around May and June. And you can see that we will focus on your know, lead, Eloqua, as well as you know sales um, uh, data. And then we'll move on and uh, do more subscription analysis and CPQ. In the SCM area, uh, like I said, that's available now. And um, you know purchase orders, receipts, uh, all of those are available. And then as we go forward in the first half, uh, we are adding the entire kind of um, product life cycle, um, you know, including shipping and cogs and so forth. Uh, as far as the HCM area is concerned, you know, we are drilling deeper into employee talent management and development, uh, payroll, and upcoming, you will see, you know, learning time and labor and more workforce uh, analytics. In the ERP area, you know, procurement is available, of course. Project analysis is coming out soon. And then fixed assets. And looking in the future, we are looking at integrating with uh, Fusion Accounting Hub, as well as you know, doing risk management. Uh, and more importantly, you know, when it comes to this cross pillar, there the idea is to provide enterprise capabilities and platform capabilities, um, you know, such as, uh, data integration from, let's say, Salesforce or EBS, right? We can bring that data into your, the ADW uh, using out-of-the-box data augmentation. Similarly, when it comes to enterprises, you know, we are working at on um, how do you import, export all of your customizations from uh, one part to another? And I can uh, drill into this more on the next slide. So if we can go to the next slide. Great. So. Um, you know, as, as it was mentioned, the Redwood team is now available all across this product. Uh, we also have a project called Bundles, and that's the one I mentioned where you can take all of your customizations and uh, export them or migrate them across your environments. Uh, some of the key things coming out, you know, data validation, uh, private access channel support. So especially for banks, you know, for security reasons, you know, that's important. Uh, semantic model extensibility. You know, if you have your own RPD and you would like to merge it with the FAW RPD, uh, that's a, a feature that a lot of people have asked for. So that's upcoming. As far as you know, languages support, we are getting closer to supporting all of the Fusion languages. Uh, four of them are coming out, and then two are left, uh, Greek and Ukrainian, which will be available uh, soon as well. Um, auditing support, uh, as well as you know, more automation and security. So that, that's what it looks like. Also, disaster recovery is something that we are looking at, um, and uh, we should be able to provide guidance on that chart. Thank you. Thank you for that FAW update, and we're going to move on now with Barry. Oh, Barry, I think you're on mute. I am. I'm just um, ready to share my screen when you can drop that.
All right, so I am just going to take you through the art of the possible and um, basically what we can actually do with Oracle Analytics. So once you get going, we have, um, this is the homepage essentially. It's gonna be a pretty brief demo, um, just an idea of what you can do. And right here, one of the concepts we have is this natural language query. And really I wanna ask a question. I wanna ask something like, you know, show me the revenue and uh, discount by customer type and product. And if I even show you this is live, I can make a mistake in there and give you a typo. And it will still, be able to come back and figure out what it does with that information. And it gives me that dashboard built live. And this is fully interactive. You know, it means that you don't have to create a dashboard or a report every time you have a question, you might be able to answer it right here. And all of it's interactive. I can right click here. I can say, let's drill into this. And I can go down to one of the things here, region, and I can look at region. I can change the chart type. And there we go. So I might have answered my question, get the data information I needed, and I'm out of there. And then that's done. So that could be a good way to um, start to think about how you interact with your data, have a real conversation with that data. The next one I'm looking at here is the, um, the revenue. I've just got a little numbers here. And I want to show you how easy it is to do some advanced statistical kind of analytics. Um, you don't need to have a data scientist or even a citizen data scientist come and show you how to do a forecast. Right here, I can say, here's my numbers tracking over time. I want to forecast. I can literally just click and drag that onto the chart and there's my forecast. Uh, I have control over that. I can choose from three different built-in models. If I choose ETS, you can see the slight changes, but that's how easy it is for anybody, any business kind of user to get in and do some of those advanced style analytics. Moving on, I'm going to show you some of what you can do here in terms of uh, some of the way that these uh, look. So this one's a very purple uh, dashboard and just because you can doesn't mean you should make it like this, but it shows you the level of formatting that you do have, that fidelity that you can have on these um, dashboards and I can zoom it out and you can have a look at more of it. Here we've got trend lines and all of it again is interactive and I can see the pattern brushing. If I select a few um, points here, it shows me the relative connected points on the other metrics with on the, on the actual charts. And here's another one. I like this one because it shows you the kind, the kind of level of formatting that you can do. And this is a very nice one that Ben created, but you can make these cards look really um, that Mac kind of 3D shape and form. Um, so you don't have to stick to those horrible old reports or you know the, what we think of a traditional 2D pie chart or even ooh, you wanna go there, but a 3D pie chart. Um, but you can create very good looking interactive dashboards um, in here. And here's another example. This is kind of a more of a pink theme um, showing you some of the capabilities we have here. Um, and over the bottom, if I can show you some of these others, as you move through these different options, um, all of the charts and things carry that theme across. So you can really customize these to look the way that your business um, needs to follow. So you can carry that livery through the thing. You can include graphics and GIFs onto the charts as well. Um, and your traditional tiles and charts. And this one, you can see each of these um, line charts actually does have a forecast on it. So you can see the, the, the kind of information you have and where we're going to go with that. Moving on again, we're going to start looking at a few spatial examples. Um, and on the spatial examples, we have a graph right here, some, some graph analytics. And what we've actually done is use the ship, which is showing a you know, topographical view of, of the containers. And I can go in here and say, you know, if I wanted to look at a certain set of containers, I can then pick maybe those two columns and it will use those as a filter. So now I know that those particular containers, I have the manifest logs, I have the costs that were required, were charged to where they're going. And at this point, I can actually even drill down into the manifest, you know, really look at what's inside those containers for the customs needs. So you have all that connection um, right there. Uh, I can also, from the network chart, I'll come back to that one. I have my map. So I know that, you know, every container has a start and, a, and an end point. If I click here on China, it's going to show me all of the containers on the ship, which are now highlighted in color. The black and whites are not going to and from China. Um, and I can see here on my um, graph that I can actually see all the nodes um, where they start. If I hover over one here, I can see this one starts here in Taijin and there's one in Shanghai or Shenzhen destined for LA and you can see how the ships move in through those container areas. So a very cool way of doing interactive with another kind of view 
um, to use graphics actually as the filter for the other objects. Now the interactivity that's created isn't coded. Um, as you create these, you just choose, um, set this as a filter, there's a little icon up here, and that is all done automatically for you. This is another example. Um, this is a supermarket uh, shop floor. And this is showing the foot traffic moving through the floor at various times a day. So right now we're seeing all day um, traffic and you can see the cafeteria down the bottom left-hand corner is kind of fairly busy. And the front of the store, which is this area here, is generally the more busy than the back of the store. But what I can do is I can step through this um, bar chart, which is again, a connected filter. And I'm looking at the time now from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And you can see it's fairly light within the store, but the cafeteria gets busy. And as I move to mid morning, cafeteria empties out. It's just kind of coffees. In fact, everybody's thinking they should be at work. And then when you get to lunchtime, it gets busy again, cafeteria gets up and interesting. And the good thing with this is that this is a kind of a much better approach to look at how um, you want to plot something like a retail store where social distancing is a really important thing these days. Maybe we're getting a little bit too <clears throat> bunched up here in the front of the aisles. Maybe we need to think about alleviating some of these red patches by making more spaces between the aisles. What can we do to make sure that there's more space, uh, social distancing adhered to in these areas? But you can see these much more clearly on a, um, this kind of plot. Like mapping, which is what this is, doesn't necessarily have to mean countries or massive geographic. You can come right down to the shop floor, gaming floor. So you can look at this for casinos, a great way to represent the data. And again, there was no coding. It's something that business users can actually do to execute that. Here's another one that just shows a lot of um, data. Uh, again, the relative things for um, the commodity prices um, around the different regions. And you can see how rice and sugar and wheat are impacting the costs. And you can actually click here on these particular things if you wanted to see what these dark patches were. It really highlights where money is getting spent versus something else. So if I click on these, it'll actually show you the regions in the map that are connected to this. And this particular one as well also has um, a nice chart, again, with that forecasting about what the consumption or commodity price of this rice, the sugar, and the wheat are going to track over the next periods that have been selected. And this one, I always like doing this one because it's a... And interesting, shows you the graphics we can do. This is the wine in review because I drink a lot of wine up in Sonoma. Um, <clears throat> now here we have the numbers. So this is a real live dashboard. And I'm going to use my air quotes because really the, the numbers and metrics are live against the data source, which you can see here on the left. As I scroll down, you can see the charts are, are real and live. I can actually drill just as before to any of the attributes that are available. But it means you can connect this directly to the data source or multiple data sources set up your infographic. You can set it up even with um, a nice wine bottle. And um, the idea with this one is really that you want to be exporting or printing this out. If you're up there and you're a wine distributor and you want to get this out to your customers, I can easily come in here and say, well, let's look at export. I can choose file. And if I go down to uh, here, I can see I have PowerPoint, Acrobat, you know, all the different options. And I'm going to choose PDF because um, it's one of the more simple ones, and here it is. So here in Acrobat, I'm looking at the PDF that was exported. And now, of course, it's not interactive, but you have an infographic. Now, this could be a much better way for you to create your infographics with live data, or at least not live, as, as refresh data as often as you export that PDF, which means you don't have to go back to complicated Adobe tools, or you don't have to go to a designer to go and create it. Um, it doesn't mean that your um, data is disconnected forever. Once you created the PDF, you can update this frequently and then you can email this out to your customers or you can place it on your website. Um, a great way to do these kind of information things uh, in this infographic format. And that's about my time. So I'm gonna hand it off to Daniel and this is one of his great Brazilian ones. He's got another great demo for you as well. I'll do this one for you next time. Thanks, Alex. Okay, all right, everything fine. Can everyone see my screen just fine? Yes. Excellent, thanks, man. Well, thank you for introducing me, Barry, and for the invitation to demo this VIS. All right, today our demonstration is gonna be really simple and quick. Our main idea here is to explore one of the possibilities of the custom maps. So 
To explore this possibility, I brought to us the open data from the Sao Paulo city subway. The data we're seeing here, it's about the average entries by station on working days. There's almost a hundred stations in the city and a flow of near two and a half million passengers every day. And in our custom map, we used as background the city transit map to identify the busiest stations. You can easily find them decoded by the red and orange colors. And as you can imagine, the busiest, busiest stations are the ones where the passengers can change between lines. Note that in this map, some stations don't have data. That's because the transit map is not only for a subway, but also includes dedicated bus lines and surface trains that are operated by other companies. And unfortunately, their data is not available in this data set. But it's enough data to show one cool feature you can activate in your maps, the autofocus on data. Uh, you can find it in the maps properties when developing your dashboards, just here. And when you combine this feature with a filter in the canvas, in our case, this donut graph, we can focus the map in a specific line. So when I click in the red line, one of the oldest subway lines in Sao Paulo, we can check only the data about that line. Or if I want to see the entries on the newest line, th that's the yellow line, the map will smoothly focus on the selected data. Okay, but was it hard to create this custom map? Honestly, it was very easy. So let me show you my maps configurations. You only need to upload an image as background. You can see it in the background tab and here in image backgrounds. Here we have the, the Siri Trans map I uploaded. We can inspect it and we can preview our, the image I uploaded for our workbook. And once the image is uploaded, we just need to create a map layer. Okay, this will bring it here to the map layer tab where our map layers are saved. And let open, let me open here the map I created. So here you can draw anything you want. Okay. In, in our case here, I draw, I drew only circles for our stations. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and for every circle, I gave them as key name, the exact station name as it is in my data set. And simple as that, we can associate our data set to this new custom map. And that's it, quick and simple. Thank you for your attention. I hope I inspire you to create your own subway map and see you next time. Thanks, Daniel, that was great. Really love the uh, demo there. Everyone, that was Daniel, we'll move on now. Thanks. With a, a layer-based combo chart, open as viewer and content management with Matt. Welcome, Matt. Hey, all right, we'll get started here. Let me share my screen. Um, these are some uh, features that uh, development is working hard on, so it will hopefully be coming to a release soon. Um, and let me start with actually what we're calling now the overlay chart. It um, gets a lot of its uh, features. Hopefully you can see this okay from the combo chart or it inherits a lot of these features from the combo chart, but it's a little more complex. And let me show you some of that. So this is a purposefully complex combo chart or overlay chart. I have four different layers here um, and they're, they're at three different types of or grains of data. So the line chart might be at one grain or have uh, limited data and the stack bar chart is at another grain where we're pulling in region and showing um, the various grains. We also have four different chart types at play here, line, area, bar, and stack bar. Let me show you this real quick. This one is purposely complex. I won't spend too much time on it, but you can see all of my layers here. And you can see that um, you know the category x-axis was shared by all the layers. Also uh, things like trellis and rows are shared by all the layers and the same with tool tip and filters. So you can apply some common stuff to all the layers, but then at each level, you can kind of customize the chart. Let's go ahead and build one. So I'm gonna go ahead and first 
Dragon a fact, which is a revenue. This is a data set I'm just kind of playing with, so I don't really know the data that well, but let's see where it brings us. I'll pull in product type. I have a bar chart. Um, I'm going to choose my um, overlay chart, the icon and name pending. Um, and you see that it's a line chart at first. Uh, that might be interesting, but I want to switch it to a bar. Super easy to work with. Um, I can just change it to a bar just like that. Um, and also, I might want to bring in additional data for this chart. I might want to you know, kind of expand it and, and change the grain of the data for this specific layer. I only have one layer here. So right now, it's not less, much different than a regular chart. But I'll bring in my departments in the color. And I'll go ahead and change this bar chart that has a breakdown of all the different departments now into a stack bar. This is a lot like a regular stack bar. So we really haven't done anything too creative yet. Um, and we're just kind of exploring the data and the different chart features, but I can see the uh, departments broken down um, by product type. Now I'm gonna add a new layer. This is where it gets more interesting. I will add, actually I'll choose line. You can change that really easily. We might make other choices later. And what I wanna do is I wanna overlay my cost, but cost is only tracked at the highest level and I don't have that department breakdown or it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to look at cost at that level. So I won't add the data grain of department here. I'm just looking at overall cost. I can assign these to the Y2 axis. Actually the data scale in this case is pretty similar, so it doesn't make a difference, but I wanted to show that you can assign any uh, layer to either the Y1 or Y2 axis. I can change it to an area chart. Um, you know, I'm not in love with the area chart here, but um, uh, you know, we might, we might be interested in that. Actually, I'll probably go ahead and uh, just change this back to a line. So you can play around with the various chart types. Um, and that's interesting. Here's total costs that I'm looking at layered over revenue broken down by department, but let's add a, a third layer. And I wanna do another comparison in the bar. And I wanna actually, uh, I wanna pull revenue into this again. I'm gonna do a different breakdown or different grain of data against revenue alongside the grain that I already have in play. Uh, so there's my revenue. You can see all the bars line up, which makes sense. You can see on the previous uh, bar, I have uh, a different breakdown um, with um, uh, revenue by department and product type versus just revenue. But let's make it more interesting and add a different grain into the third layer, which we just added. And I will actually choose a different uh, attribute here instead of something we've already used. So I'll skip product and offices and actually let's go down the salesperson. And I'll go ahead and pick um, sales rep type. I'm kind of just picking different uh, attributes here and hoping that it works well. Um, but um, this will show a breakdown on bars. Now I chose bar charts, so now we hit, we don't we can't really compare the scales too well. Like I can't compare the breakdown of revenue by department with sales rep type. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to a stack bar chart. It'll change to a stack bar chart, and you'll I'll see those two chart types at two different grains of data side by side, be able to do a direct comparison, all with the cost at a much lower grain, uh, much less finite grain of data uh, overlaying it. I can also do general things I would do with any chart. I can change the line type to straight, put points on it, labels, a whole bunch of stuff, filling, sorting. I won't be able to have time to get into all of it, but this is coming soon. And I think it will um, allow users to create great uh, visualizations that have layers of data that they can compare with. All right, uh, next up, I want to um, show you a great feature that um, uh, lots of people are interested in because they have this use case where they have a user, in my case, it's called DV Authors, the name of the user. Um, we have really boring names that has either left the company or changed roles. And they had some mission critical or super important data that only they had access to and they haven't granted to everyone else. So in this example, I have a super important data set, a super important data flow that all drives this mission critical data set and dashboard that I've shared with other users. And now we're stuck, we can't update it. In the past, this would have been a, an SR and, a, and a, a support call that you'd have to make to have this ownership change. Now uh, we're able to let uh, service administrators do this on their own. So I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna show you how that's done. I'm gonna log in as a service administrator. Um, and let me do some searching first, just to show you that these objects don't exist. So I'll, I'll search for that super important data set. Um, you'll see it'll make some suggestions of other things, but super important is not coming up. 
And then I can search for mission. And you'll see that I do have access to that data set and that dashboard because I can't open the dashboard, but I just can't update the data. When I right click, I have very limited options. And when I inspect, I can't change any sort of access rules and give this to someone else to uh, be able to manage it. So now um, I'm gonna jump into my council page and go into my content section where I'm gonna do all my content management. On this page, I'm seeing all the objects in this entire system. There's a whole bunch. Um, you can see all the different users. This is a sample system. You guys might have even more. I can quickly and easily filter this so that I can find what I need. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose data flow and data set, because that's what I was interested in changing ownership. And they are at the top in this case, but they might not be. Um, I just recently changed these, so that's why they show up at the top, because it's sort by modified. But if I know the owner's name, I can just put, you know, DV author user is the name. So I'll put DVA star um, and the three that I'm interested in show right up there. I can also um, just do general searches. So I can leave that owner in there and type permission. And I see the one that has the word mission in it. So you can really easily find what you need to change ownership on. In this case, I'm interested in changing this owner from DV author to myself. And I'm interested to do it on all three of these objects. So I'm gonna use my keyboard and I'm gonna multi-select and I'm gonna change ownership. I could type a name, it will do type ahead, but I'll just say assign to me, changes, and then I'll um, you know, uh, give these to other users. So I own these objects now, they're mine. I can inspect them. Um, whatever I would do as an owner, I can do here. Now on this data set, I'm now the owner and I have full control. Um, I can do most of the um, activity on that page, but I can also just go to the home screen. I can see that now I can right click on this data set um, and I have all the options to edit it. I can change access and add other users to it. And in fact, if I search, search for that data flow that I need to run, this is a sample. So it's a really basic data flow, but I can go ahead and open it, modify it and run it. So that's object ownership. I think it'll allow uh, users to really control the content on their system or administrators to control the content on the system, you know, in, in a, a much easier and um, better way. All right, the last feature we call open as viewer. We know that authors often work on and edit projects, but oftentimes they're done editing and they just want to view them. Um, and in case that could be the, that could be the case most of the time. So we're introducing a new feature called open as viewer and in the profile for the user, they can set this feature on or off. If they don't like it, they can just turn it off. And what that means is when they first open a workbook, they'll be in view mode. They'll see what their end users who are only consumer users or only have, or don't have edit rights to see. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have that set. I'm gonna open my workbook and you'll see that it'll open up and it will be in um, view mode. I can do basic interaction that's allowed in view mode. I can drill, I can change filters. I don't have any Chrome in my way uh, that might be hindering my experience. Um, but if I'm ready to edit or I notice something wrong in the project that I wanna edit and I have authoring rights or edit rights, I can just hit the edit button and I quickly sit, switch to authoring modes. Also, if you wanted to control this on a per workbook basis, because you might be working on a workbook that's super important and you're editing it all the time, you could just set this on or off on a per workbook basis. So we think this will be a great feature that we hope customers will love. All right, that's it. I hope you guys liked it. Thanks, Matt. Sure. Some great insights there. Yep, Philippe, I'm gonna pass it over to you now for an auto insights demo, some exciting stuff coming up. Go ahead and take Thank it Thank you, away. Alex. Thank you, Alex. Uh, let me share my screen. <clears throat> can you, you can see my screen? Yes. Thank you. So I'll take a minute to talk to you, a few minutes to talk to you about the very exciting feature. My name is Philippe Lyons, by the way, I'm on the Oracle management, uh, OAC product management team. I'm very excited with this feature because, it, well, it's called Auto Insights and it's increasing the arsenal of capabilities in Oracle Analytics to do augmented analytics. And that's helping me, a business analyst, to get quickly to very uh, powerful insights with my own data. And that doesn't expect me to have the skills necessary to build all of it. So basically it's a fast pass, as you can see on the slide from my gross data into a very quickly built dashboard with insights on it. You can see a URL at the bottom here. If you're interested, you can also see this video, this demo in a video, it's called OAC Gen 22 feature, you can go there. But you know, let me uh, be brave and uh, 
go with a live demo here. So this is my OAC environment. By the way, that feature will be on the upgrade of analytics that happens next week, the January update of Oracle Analytics. So you'll be able to enjoy it and, and use it from your site as well. So let me actually create a data set live from my own uh, hard drive. So sure enough, uh, this is a live demo. So most likely it's going to maybe ask me to log in again. Let me try another window here. All right. Hang on, we'll try another one here. Create a data set. <clears throat> okay, I may have to revert to a video. Let me, let me do this. Let me skip the creation data set. Sorry about this. This is a live demo, as you can see, real one. Maybe the environment is down. All right, so I'll, I'll ask you for a second. I'll, I'll pull up a video. Give me a second, sorry about this. I'm just opening up a video. And Philippe, if you'd like, I can do my section and then we can go back to you. Um, yes. To, okay. That great. would be great. Appreciate that. Right. Thank you very much. Sorry about this. Yeah. Um, let me start my video and then I'll share my screen. So hi, I'm Jamie Anderson. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. All right, so um, we'll skip to my section here for now. Um, ben or Alex, can you confirm that you see my um, dashboard up here? Yes. Great. Okay, um, so I'm going to show some FAW dashboards. Um, so um, just to define FAW again, Fusion Analytics Warehouse. So it is a solution that we have for our Fusion ERP, HCM, SCM, and eventually CX customers um, that use Oracle Cloud Fusion. And they have the ability to use Oracle Analytics that um, plugs into their data that's coming from those environments. And with that, we have pre-built um, dashboards available for them. Um, now, of course, we have pre-built, which is great, but we also have um, available all the features that you've seen today as well um, with the existing OAC platform as well. But this is the out-of-the-box dashboards that we have. Um, so I'm going to um, um, focus on HCM today. So the first dashboard I'd like to go over is our diversity analysis dashboard. So um, we have uh, different uh, visualizations available for uh, people to see. So um, let's see, distribution of male versus female for gender, um, turnover percentage by quarter, promotions, hires, um, promotions by month, um, turnover percentage by month, distribution by month. Um, and then also as I move my Zoom screen here, um, a higher head count as well um, for a trailing 12 months. Um, so this is all within the um, gender, or I'm sorry, the diversity analysis pre-built dashboard um, as well. Um, so another canvas that we have available within that dashboard is the ethnicity canvas. So we call these canvases um, down at the bottom here. Um, and so you can see um, your ethnicity um, breakdown um, by quarter. Um, so turnover percentage, kind of the same thing that we saw in the other one, but on an ethnicity basis. Um, and we have a few other things as well down here um, by worker category. Um, and then let's see, we also have an age group canvas. And so um, you can see the distribution um, by, um, again, current quarter. And of course, um, these are out of the box dashboards, like I said, but if there's, you know, a, a use case to see maybe by month, by year, those things are also possible as well. Um, so turnover percentage, promotions, hires, hires by month. Um, again, worker category, just different ways to view the same information or, or um, in different ways. Um, also, um, tenure, um, long term, short term employees. Um, and then also we have um, my country. So if you're an international country or international company, um, then you can see your different breakouts by, um, by country as well um, for your workforce. Um, another dashboard that we have and um, for our FAW customers, and I apologize, my phone is going off. Um, we also have the talent acquisition dashboard, which is a new one um, that has been requested by customers that we speak to um, also you can think of it as a recruiting dashboard um, to view different um, job openings by location that you have, um, different job applicants, total openings, vacancies, um, and then offers extended. Um, we also have some other canvases as well within this dashboard. 
And I'll let that load here for a second. Oh, I may have not changed my filters for this. Oh no, it's just loading. Um, so an average time to fill, um, average time to offer, total applicants, um, hiring phase, um, a lot of different things that you have access to with these pre-built dashboards. Um, we also have, and I'll just kind of move along here, um, a different dashboard out of the box again for hires and leavers. So you can see um, by job family, hey, who's leaving the most, who's being hired the most. Um, and yeah, I think this is probably something that's pretty relevant um, in, in today's um, great resignation um, kind of mindset. Um, and so to kind of keep a pulse on who, who might be leaving and who might be you know, uh, joining the uh, different areas within a company. And you can also see a breakdown, a geographic breakdown as well for this. Um, with that, and we have other out of the box um, dashboards available for Fusion HCM. And of course, I didn't go over today, but we have it again for um, Fusion ERP and also Fusion SCM, so supply chain management. And then, um, uh, yeah, so I think I will pass it to Philippe if you are ready. Um, otherwise, yes. I can keep going. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you very much, Amy. Appreciate your help. Yeah, no problem. Uh, let me share again. Let's. Uh, uh, Okay, sorry about this. This was a live demo, right? So this is, I'm back to my environment here and I'm going to create a data set. So I'm, I'm doing it end to end from scratch. So here's a sales data, Excel data with some, some order entry data. So I'm uploading this data, it's about 10,000 rows and I'm just going to take it as is. We can see a preview, but I'm going to load it into OAC as is. And let's, let me remind you, I am a business analyst and I'm not familiar with this data myself, nor am I so familiar with the techniques to visualize it in Oracle Analytics. Moreover, I don't have much time. So, and I need to get some insights out of this. And these are the columns, as you can see, that we have in this data set, about 20 columns. So it's, you know, it would be some work for me to try to understand what's going on with this data. So you can see on the top right of my screen here is a little white light bulb, which is indicating that, hey, we're looking at your data set behind the scenes, but we haven't found anything yet. Come back in a second. Well, actually, as you can see, it just turned yellow right now. So now I'm going to click on it, click on it again. And here I'll see a series of different visualizations that the system, Oracle Analytics, found out on my data. So these are telling me about uh, let me, if I hover my mouse over the text, I will see a little bit more data here. And uh, uh, comparing total profit for different dimension members here over time, this is probably an interesting one. Here's a seasonality one, so there's more information there. And I can drag, I can scroll down and see different visualization here popping up, you know, percent split and mix, index gross profit. That seems technical. Well, let me actually click on the plus sign here. And as I do this, this visualization makes it into my canvas and in, into my dashboard. So maybe I want to add seasonality of profit. So seasonality over many years of my data, but just for months. And I can do my handpicking here of which visualization I'm interested with, just reading what they are showing and adding them very easily to my own um, canvas here. So let me uh, go a little further. Here's a top end. I'm just going to make it a little uh, more busy here. Here's the uh, index pro grows for profit. Here's a cluster visualization. Let's say that I've, had, uh, I've added enough visualization at this point. Let me turn this pane off, clicking on the bulb. And now I'm left with, I'm left with my own canvas full of uh, powerful visualizations. And it literally take us, took us less than three minutes to go from a data that, that we didn't know to a dashboard with several visualizations. Now here, there are, these are exactly vanilla visas in OAC, just like I had built them myself manually. So in other words, I can use filtering, I can use brushing, I can, for instance, click on express hair consumer segment record counts, 2% two, 2 of my records and my entire dashboard will filter. And maybe we wanna look at this just for the months of December. And I can see, obviously, just like visits that I would have built myself, this dashboard is fully interactive. Uh, moreover, what I can see is the calculations that were used to build these advanced visas are all there in my canvas as well. So I can see percentage 
calculation, I can see index calculation. You know what, I'm not familiar enough with OAC, but this is helpful because it's indicating to me how to make this, this advanced calculation and derive insights with this. Very easily, I can go and say, this vis I like, but the metrics that were picked, they're not the best one I would have thought of. So what if I changed, uh, let's look at discount value by gross unit price, for instance, right? See if we have any correlation there and the vis will adjust. So these are vises and canvas that are completely flexible to me at this point. Maybe we could call them templates that I'm editing. Maybe we could call them insights that the system has discovered into my own data, but it's a, it's a huge fast forward for me from zero to a nice looking dashboard with deep insights within a few minutes. And that's called auto insights. And you'll be able to use this from next week onwards on the January upgrade of OEC. Thank you. So some exciting stuff coming up and thanks Jamie for that uh, FAW dashboard. Uh, update there. I'm going to share my screen back out and we're going to go to the Q&A portion of our webinar now. And I'm just putting um, a quick poll also to ask to score the, the webinar. So let us know if you like uh, the webinar. Uh, if you want also, you can send us an email. Tomorrow you will receive an email with a video recording, uh, with a presentation, with the name of the speaker. And if you have ideas for the next webinar next month, let us know if you want to see more machine learning, more demo of Matt, more demo of Philip, or anything else. And if you volunteer also to present your data visualization, send an email to me or Alexandria, and we will select the best one. Thank you. All right, so I'll ask the Oracle team um, if you're available and you can turn on your web camera. We'll start to go through these Q&A. Uh, some of these questions here. If uh, you see something that you think you can answer, go ahead and just shout it out and take it. Otherwise, we'll start going through these together. All right, so let's start at the top here. I can take a few. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, there were a bunch of questions around bundles. So that, uh, that capability will be available end of February. And yes, it will allow you to take all your customizations, whether it is custom decks or cards um, and migrate them from one environment to another. Uh, other questions I see is data validation available for HCM? Uh, yes, that will be available um, around end of February as well. Uh, it's already available for ERP. Another question is SOX compliance for FAW. Uh, so the auditing reports will start becoming available um, in, in future releases. Now they will help you with SOX compliance, but we are not targeting specifically like a checklist for SOX compliance. I'll let others answer. Thanks, and if you can just go in and update those questions that you answered for us here, so we know which ones um, you answered, that'd be great. All right, here's one. Um, how do we find out more about Pi Day? No URL given. Carrie, do you, do you have some more information there? Yeah, I think I mentioned it's not yet being promoted. It's kind of uh, an informational to let you guys know it's coming uh, mid-February. The developer.com, oracle.developer.com will have the event posted where you'll see the agenda and start to be able to register. And we'll be starting to promote through these channels as well once it becomes available. I think, Alex, the one on Cerner integration will be for maybe Joey. Uh, the question is, is Cerner integration on the Fusion Analytic Warehouse roadmap? Yeah, we haven't announced uh, any plans for the integrations uh, with Cerner. The, I believe the deal still has some regulatory approval to finalize. So. Unfortunately, we can't answer anything yet, but in the press release, you'll, you'll hear we indicate some future direction in terms of how we anticipate modernizing uh, the Cerner experience and uh, voice capabilities, et cetera, that we intend to add. Larry had commented on that. So unfortunately, that's all I can share so far, but stay tuned. Thanks, Joey. 
Um, we can move on to another one. Let's see. Is there any presentation or future plans to show the technology landscape and how the different Oracle products are used in sports? Uh, so currently, a lot of that's is dependent upon the partner of whether they're able, you know, to to show that. I'll put in the chat a couple of links for the public side of where customers can keep up to date on what's able to be. Um, you know, visible to all public. Uh, we do do technical reference architectures and training internally for the products. So if you have questions uh, about something specific or need more information, reach out to your sales account manager. Thanks, Carrie. All right, when is the next OAS scheduled to release? I can help with this. We're expect, this is Philip. we're expecting this, uh, end of first quarter calendar so april let's see this year perfect and another one for you can we generate auto insights in oracle analytics using subject area data the answer is not yet we're working on this for now you can use auto insights on database source data sets or or file based data set but not yet on subject areas All right, and here's people, another, believe, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, as a follow-up to that, I, I don't know if this is true, so I'm asking you, but I think it is true. Uh, they could create a data set from a, using the local subject area connection and then do auto insights on that, is that correct? Yeah, it's uh, not yet. Not yet, not okay, yet. all right. Yeah, all right. that's the plan, that's the plan. Thanks for okay. bringing this up, Matt. Yeah. All right, so we have another one here. How many of these dashboards were created in Classic Home? So. Maybe um, I'll ask the team to speak up if you created or demoed um, any dashboard that was created in Classic Home. Actually, none today were, were demoed using Classic. Everything we saw today was built using data visualization. Okay, next question. Are the OAC analytics queries shown today running through BI server RPD or do they execute directly in the data warehouse DB? In, in my demos, I was running through the BI server um, RPD just because it was a demo database, but that really depends on your setup and whether or not the uh, query execution uh, function ships to the database. So I'm not sure about other presenters, but mine was a demo uh, sample RPD. And so that's why it does execute on the BI server. But in many cases in production, you wouldn't, you could want to do function shipping and it will depend on your database setup configuration, a whole bunch of factors. So was mine, by the way, direct uh, connection as you saw. For the survey demo, we used an Excel file. Okay, are we able to write the data back into Snowflake from an Oracle data prep output? Data preparation does not have um, write back capabilities. Data flows does. So if you mean data flows, I think that's uh, the question you'd be asking. And, and I, I, I believe, and I'd have to uh, verify this, that you can write back to any database connection but I'm not 100% positive on Snowflake. So I'd have to take that as an offline question to get answered and I can do that. All right, thanks, Matt. What is Roadmap OAC has on Red API support? Yeah, we have some Roadmap items on API support. I wasn't sure what Red API support was. Maybe REST. Yeah, yeah, so we we are planning to um, expose more APIs. Um, that's on the roadmap. I don't think we have any dates to share, but that's an active project. All right. Let's see. I believe we have one for you. Will new insights yeah. be available from OAD and will it be the 6.4? So it will be January update 6.4, and it will be Oracle Analytics Cloud, and then Oracle Analytics Server, but not uh, not the desktop version. 
the, uh, the uh, calculations that goes on behind the scenes is uh, only suitable for hosted environments. All right, it looks like we have another one for you about the insights feature. Um, any plans to enable this for RDP dimensions, Fax? Yes, yeah, so that, that's similar to the previous question. This is not yet available on repositories, but it will be on local subject areas pretty soon we're working on this. And I see another question as well on does auto insight replace explain and the answer is no it's not replacing explain auto insight is taking a data set and looking at the best visualizations it can come up with on top of it as opposed to explain explain is letting the user point to a column and then does all sorts of machine learning about that given column that these are two different processes and they will remain part of OAC they will not be replaced one by another All right, just seeing if we have any other insights questions here. I think that's all. I'm not sure how to answer this one, but I love that there's a question on non fungible tokens. I think that someone posted a question about NFTs. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. yeah. are you hearing a need for NFT and metaverse strategy from sports team? Does Oracle have any plan offering on those lines? I would say from the sports uh, topics I've been uh, around, there hasn't been anything direct around NFT or metaverse, but there's definitely a lot around social sentiment. And there are some uh, starter kits and offerings that we're working on right now uh, with the NHL that would be exposed hopefully this year that we can um, show. So it would be exciting to see if something comes in that world, but nothing that I've heard of. Um, so we have still 15 questions, Alex, correct? Yes, that I can okay. see. I will take one or two on my side. I see uh, from Jean-Michel, um, what about ETL feature included into OAC? So uh, we have data flow. I always say we never have to say data flow, it's an ETL because it's not. <laughs> but basically data flow, it's a mini ETL allowing you to connect to all data sources with JDBC connectivity. Um, you can connect to Redshift, uh, Snowflake, MongoDB, Hadoop, Spark, Oracle database, you name it. And with um, data flow, you don't have to install any software, any driver, any separate uh, desktop software on your, on your computer. It's cloud-based, it's included into OAC, and you can do join, filter, aggregating the result, you can do machine learning, uh, sentiment analysis, you can do all type of operation. I created a blog showing all the operation. I think we have close to 100 different operations. So really, really powerful. And I see also that you ask um, on the following, permitting to transform many table to one set of data. Yes, data flow, you can bring table from Oracle, Redshift and so on. You can bring four, five, 10 tables uh, merge them, join them, uh, do any type of transformation, and then save that into your data warehouse or into uh, in memory or into an object store. Uh, and then I will say that uh, Philip can also chime in after that, but we will have also what we call the semantic cloud modeler or the cloud semantic modeler. And uh, this is going to permit also the same type of things. And Philip, maybe you can chime in. Yes, and there is a question. Well, the semantic based web based modeler is a way to build metadata on on uh, on the cloud. Uh, and this is uh, there is a question about this about when it's supposed to ship. There is a limited ability, limited availability version that uh, you can reach out to us to access now. And the GA generally availability general availability is expected for mid this year calendar year two thousand twenty two. I see a question also about uh, uh, map uh, and, and spatial uh, customized graph layouts that uh, you've seen in these demos. And yes, the answer is currently, this is requiring you to build some custom layers. And what you that's what you've seen today. However, I want to point out that uh, in the near future in OAC, you will also have the ability to consume directly geometric, geometric columns from any databases and um, bypass 
to need to create a custom layer. So this is cooking, we're working on this and it should get into the product sometime soon. I've got a kind of follow-up question on that from Philippe, which is on spatial um, from Robert Corrieri about which visualization object is the route visual, which I showed. I'm assuming that was from the ship demo. And in there was a, a plugin actually that has the, a graph network diagram. So mm -hmm. um, our visualizations are actually extensible. There's, there's a lot in there, but if your particular visual isn't in there already, you can easily go to our library and Philippe has that online and you can grab those plugins like that network, um, that routing visual, import that into your instance. As long as you give it the right data, it'll work like a first class object as if it was any of the others. So that's what that route visual was. It was the plugin um, and that is available free online. And I see there is a question that maybe Isabel can answer. Isabel, are you here? Yes, I yeah. am. Okay, perfect. There is a kind of uh, analyst competing question. What are the competing products uh, for OAC? How does OAC stand against it? So I don't know if you have looked at the latest Garner Magic Quadrant and the latest Garner critical capabilities that we've licensed. Um, we might be able to share with you as, um, as a follow-up link, but Oracle Analytics performed really, really well in terms of Oracle, um, in terms of cloud analytics. We were like um, the top, top one for cloud analytics and the number one for general analytics across the board for all types of use cases. So in terms of a feature set and, and capabilities, uh, Oracle Analytics Cloud performs and really well with the likes of Garner Forrester. And we were a leader part of the Forrester wave as well, if you have noticed. And we were also leader for the BARC and the nucleus reports. So uh, across the board, um, Oracle Analytics Cloud performed really well in terms of the product and features. I want to see the cat of Jamie back on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Just walked away, thank you. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> okay, Alex, you can go next, sorry. All right, what else do we have? Any planned retirement date for classic dashboards? When is the equivalency planned in the modern UI? I don't think there is any plans to retire classic dashboards at this point. And there's yep. good reason for that, right? So um, the DV that we looked at today is a very, if a Gartner's mode one or mode two, BI, if you want to use that kind of terminology, DV is really about users getting in there and interacting and exploring the data and doing what we did. There is still a need to have that centralized IT governed reports and dashboards that get created and subsequently pushed out to the to the masses. So that's the difference between the two platforms and they're not going to take over each other. They're not going to merge into each other anytime soon and they're not going to go away. Yeah, and, and last thing about that, uh, we are speaking with like hundred, if not thousand of customers, uh, which are very, very, very large corporation of Fortune 500. Uh, they have plenty of audits with KPMG, with ENY and others, and they need really a um, strong, complex, robust solution to show pivot table. Classic is currently very, very mature to show pivot, pivot table for uh, audit purpose. Uh, so to recreate that in DV will take a little bit of time. So for now, some companies have maybe, I don't know, 50,000 reports in Classic. Um, and we are we don't want to push them to migrate all this report to DV. So we are not going to retire classic now, but obviously we push people to use more DV because as you see with Philip, we have a lot of new AI and also auto inside capabilities that are going to, to come faster and faster. All right, we have an FAW one here. Is there a demo or sandbox environment available for FAW? or will it be any time down the road? Jenny? Um, this I'm unsure about. Um, I think, and Ben, if you, you know more than I do on this, um, please feel free to pop in. <laughs> um, that's something that we can um, take into consideration if we don't have already. Okay, so right now we are looking to see if we can deliver maybe some uh, some demo instances for partners. So we are discussing that. We will see if it's coming. 
And then we will see with uh, Philip, Pete, and maybe a few others uh, if, um, if we will have a demo. So I see that uh, Karim is telling us that, yes, there is a demo environment for FAW. Okay, so that is good. I think maybe it's for partner only. Um, and then Philip, do you know if we have a, a demo environment sandbox FAW for customers or for you? Everyone? Uh, we have uh, we have sandboxes, but they don't hold the FAW content, unfortunately, no. Okay, so we will see. It's a good uh, good question. Right. <clears throat> is it possible? I see. That... Go ahead. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was seeing a, a question that is burning my 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 <laughs> lips. Um, there's a question from Gaurav about can Python or shell scripts be invoked from inside OAC? It's a great question. The answer today is not yet, but uh, by the end of uh, this quarter or early April, there will be an upgrade of OAC. So not the January one, but the next one that will allow you to exactly do this. So there is a mechanism that will allow uh, administrators to register custom scripts, Python scripts in this case, and let business user run them in Dataflow. So this is coming, stay tuned and uh, we can probably show you a preview demo of this uh, in, in one of the upcoming calls. And I see another question from Zheng Wei. Uh, DV today is on 6.3. It's actually going to upgrade to 6.4 next week. And OAS is still one year old. It's using 5.9. And the question is, when will OAS catch up with DV? OAS will catch up with DV by the end of this quarter, let's say, by beginning of Q2, so April, and it will be based on January 6-4, January 22 feature set. So OAS will be the same as what you're going to get tomorrow, next week, in OAC. Okay, here's, here's a question I can't ignore. What's the name of Jamie's cat? And is the cat trained on DV and available for consulting opportunities? <laughs> um, the cat's name is Mises. Um, I have another one too that looks very similar named Misa um, from Game of Thrones. Um, Mises is named after an economist. Um, Mises isn't very good at much other than snuggling. So um, he's not trained on DV. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex, where is your, your cat? Uh, he is locked out of the room, so he doesn't <laughs> misbehave. <laughs> Maybe he'll join next time. We will do a demo session just with a cat next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. Is it possible to implement only Oracle BI Publisher on OAC like it was done um, on OBI EE 12C? I mean... A BI Publisher is part of OBIE 12C and part of Oracle Analytics also. Now, is it possible to implement only BI Publisher uh, without all over components? I don't know. Philippe, do you know if we can deactivate? I think when we when we set up an instance of OAC, it's showing only, uh, I mean, it's showing everything as a package, right? You cannot select, it's yes. not like an, an install, yeah. Correct, correct. However, you can probably uh, extract just the URL. You, you leave that, that technology just as is, but you can point your users just to the BIP uh, URL. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, yes, that's probably the thing that comes to my mind. That, that technology is part of OAC anyway, right? Just like you have it in BIE. So you, yeah. you can't decouple it. You can just point to a single URL for sure. I mean, a, a BIP URL. Mm -hmm. All right, from Richard, loving the new features. Thank you. <laughs> when can we expect to see the updated version of the agent deliveries console that was mentioned last year? Oh, the this agent. Is... Oh, okay, so the agent delivery console that was mentioned last year, it's available already. If, if I'm not mistaken, we can see already, uh, I mean, we can see a a, a, a data set which is Codal and see if it's going to be delivered, it's on the left. Uh, now for agent, for OBI agent, I think it will be coupled with uh, DV workbook email. Is it correct, Philip? Yeah, that's being worked on. Okay. All right. 
what is the suggested method to implement CICD and OAC to promote the artifacts from one environment to another? Is using snapshots the only way to do this? I think I saw your question everywhere at Bigit on the LinkedIn group here. So I think we definitely need to have an answer for you. I'm not sure if Barry, you know, or uh, I don't know. Me, sorry. Um, what is the suggested method to implement CI, CD in OAC to promote the artifact from one environment to another? So let's say you have dev or you have qual and you want, um, for example, a script to move snapshot from um, from one way to another. I'm not sure if uh, if we have a mechanism. I see Barry needs to drop. So I don't know, Philippe, if we have a mechanism for that. I think I, I got the question from multiple customers on that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, right now I would say, not knowing I would say uh, export and or uh, snapshots is the way to do this, but um, I'm sure that, that the, the, the question has more details behind it than, than just this. So, yeah, and, and Wayne, uh, Wayne Van Sloos is also saying that in the, in the chat uh, via catalog manager, but I'm sure Abhijit, you are thinking about more uh, a script or a mechanism which is making it automatically in the cloud. I, I, I don't know. I think we, we need to take this question and maybe Alex, you can take it as an action uh, item. Uh, there mm -hmm. is one point of information though in the January update and actually uh, furthermore in the March update, the next one, you will see APIs, REST mm -hmm. APIs to do snapshots, export and import. Okay, so you can automate and productize import and um, automate basically script exports of snapshots and imports of snapshots. So this could probably go down the path of this question. These APIs are available in limited availability in January, so next week. So you need to contact PM if you want to try it, and it will be GEA hopefully in March. And Isabel is telling in the chat, um, is it going to be maybe something in the new cloud semantic modeler? Yeah, the new cloud semantic modeler has integration with Git repository. And so with that integration with the Git repository, you'll get some level of CI CD for the semantic layer. Okay. Um, perfect. So I think it's already 122. So maybe Alex, you can go through the, the last four questions really quick. <laughs> okay. Um, hi team, I want to connect OAC that is in one uh, Tennessee and DB in another Tennessee, but both are in OCI. Want to know if there's any way they can talk. If yes, can you please share any doc on that? Um, I don't want to take the data gateway route. Um, I think that Manoj, it would be good if you send us an email, we will connect you um, internally with uh, a technical PM on that. I think you can do, uh, uh, if it's two different Tennessee, you can set up some type of, uh, a subtype of uh, bridge uh, between both of them. I think I did that in my previous experience. So um, if you, if we take that as an action item, maybe Alex, um, to remember to contact Manoj, uh, we have your email and we will, um, we will do that. All right, the view mode, is it a way to restrict a user to be able to see only a specific dashboard without the ability to edit it? What we need is to be able to provide our customer with a standard set of dashboards without them to be able to edit them. Philippe, you want to yes. take it or Daniel? That, 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 that is definitely part of the, so if we're talking about OAC here, right? Yes, so that that will definitely be part of uh, of the features that you will see coming in the next two to three upgrades. Uh, yes, no, yes. Perfect. All right, another one from Richard. Any plans to allow us to control the data available to DB? I would like to limit users to just access to RPD based data and limit. BYOD. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, there is. Yes, there is a con uh, grain control of the features, basically privileges, that is being worked on. And again, so I'm sorry, I can kind of repeat the same uh, uh, type of answer, but this is being worked on, so that privileges that users access in DV. 
like uploading data, I'm hoping, or accessing different set of features are more granularly controlled by administrators. So I don't know exactly if data upload is one of these grain, but uh, I would suppose it is, but uh, this, this entire effort is going on right now. So I would give it a couple of, maybe a quarter of two or two before you start seeing some of these capabilities in the product. So I will take the last one, which is a question from Jean-Michel Ricuet of, uh, about pricing. I participate to the process of selecting a new software for customer and the price is an important call. Why my last customer had choose, uh, chosen sorry, Power BI is because of the price, or I see it's quite expensive. Same with BYOL. Um, so I think, Isabel, we, we can say that OAC normally, the price point is usually below Power BI. We, we hear the inverse because um, I think at 10, you, you have a 10 user limit per month, and we have also one OCPU limit per month. Um, and I think it's, it's usually a competitive advantage. Isabel, maybe you can... Uh, yeah, so I think um, when I um, arrived, we um, brought some level of parity between our pricing and the Power BI pricing, so we are competitive vis-a-vis uh, -vis the competition. And there might be discounting model that you can leverage as well to make sure that you can sort of align with the pricing from Power BI. But I, I would say, you know, overall, if you're looking at the bigger picture, um, if you want to buy, you know, um, uh, behind analytics for say, um, build some insight onto your Oracle applications, uh, things that we have in terms of, of in terms of connectivity or even fusion analytics will save you way more time as opposed to building your own with a product that might be a bit cheaper because all the productivity, the acceleration to and the time to value that you'll be getting with Oracle Analytics or Fusion Analytics will be uh, so much more just compared to the cost that you'll be paying with Power BI, where you have to have this never ending of building and updating of your you know, different hierarchies and reports and dashboards as the application change. So I think it's good to have a look at the holistic picture as opposed to just a price comparison. Um, side by side. Yeah, and Jean-Michel, I will say that if you have time tomorrow, you will have my email inside the Oracle Analytics live follow-up email. If you can drop me an email on that, I will, uh, I will maybe forward it to Jacques Dish, which is in charge of pricing. Uh, we welcome all the feedback, so that will be interesting to see why your customer went on that way or not the other way. Uh, last question, and then we turn off because we need to lunch. Um, Zeng Wei, Zeng, maybe Philippe, you want to take that one or two last question? Okay, and then that's it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so um, there, the only way, well, there are several controls and constraints for OAC, so basically engine, right? The OAC engine to execute or not a query. Uh, there are timeouts, and there are also controls that you can set yourself in your metadata, so in the semantic, in the repository, uh, and same for BIP. So you can parameterize this in the repository. Now, the real detail is what is the condition you're talking about? Uh, so until, uh, if th there are definitely parameters that you can force, even if the user doesn't select them, such as uh, filters for multidimensional queries. So there are ways to achieve that, uh, but the question could be very broad. Perfect. And last question, why the ranking of OAC on Gartner slipped from leader quadrant? Uh, so no, we were in the niche uh, quadrant in Gartner. Uh, in the past two years, we moved from niche quadrant to the top of visionary. If you see um, in Gartner Magic Quadrant, we have only, I think, um, Power BI and maybe Tableau as leader, but uh, all the rest is moving on the bottom left where uh, OAC is going up. So in Gartner, it's going very well. Uh, Forrester, we are leader just beside uh, Power BI, which is huge. And in IDC, we are also leader. So I will say it's going very well, but I agree with you. We should be on the leader quadrant and we are pushing for that. It's where you will see more and more AI, um, I will say services with OAC and integration, more and more on, of machine learning. Uh, Philippe is working on thousands of features. Um, and to help us to become a leader in the magic quadrant, we really need the maximum of users to go in Gartner Peer Insight website and to put a review. So Alexandria will contact you, uh, will contact you sorry about that. Uh, but if you want to push us to the top, help us. If you are a customer or a user, go to Gartner Peer Insight, 
put a review and it will help us. Uh, in any case, thank you so much for joining and maybe uh, uh, Alex, you can wrap up. All right, thanks everyone for joining. I hope you have a great weekend wherever you are in the world um, as we're closing out our Friday here. We'll see you next month for the next edition of ROA Live. Bye.